Okay, this podcast is actually about the regulation of the cell cycle, so that should probably be your heading, uh, regulation of the cell cycle. Uh, how we control when the cell cycle takes place, when it turns on, when it turns off, what parts of it it moves on to, things like that. Um, this is where we ended the discussion of mitosis, so I just wanted to remind you of that and to point out some different parts of this. Uh, remember there are all these stages uh, that the cell moves through, and the question that we're going to be talking about with this particular vodcast is how does the cell know when to move from G1, where it's growing, to making more DNA? How does the cell know when to do that? How does the cell know when to stop making more DNA and make some centrioles? How does the cell know when to stop making centrioles and move on to mitosis? So we're kind of going to put together this idea of cell communication, that different cells can talk to each other by sending chemical messages, with mitosis and the cell cycle, and how that's regulated or how that's timed out. How does the cell know how to go through or when to go through these different parts? So regulation of mitosis specifically is dependent upon something called cyclins. Um, cyclin is a type of chemical, and there's different types of cyclins, but they're all in the same group of chemicals that can rise and fall in levels throughout the stages of the cell cycle. So in some stages of the cell cycle, some cyclins are low, and in some stages, other cyclins are high. Um, there are these types of cyclins called CDKs, cyclin-dependent kinases, which control different parts of interface. Um, in order for uh, G1, that growth and development of the cell to take place, have to have plenty of CDK4 around. In order for the S phase, or making more DNA to occur, there needs to be plenty of CDK2 around to signal that phase to happen. And in order for the M phase, or mitosis, to actually happen, there needs to be a lot of CDK1 around, and then the cell will go into mitosis. So the levels of these different CDKs, which are um, again, related to these cyclins, um, are fairly stable, but they have to uh, um, bind to the appropriate part in order to be activated. Okay, so these kinases have to bind together with the right cyclin in order to actually turn on whatever phase there it is. So um, it's not so much that the cyclin level is going up and down, but the amount of the kinase that is bound to a particular cyclin goes up and down to make these CDKs. And that's what controls going from one stage to another. Um, there are some other types of chemicals that can uh, control what's going on in the cell cycle. There's something called anaphase promoting complex, APC, or cyclosome, um, which allows the sister chromatids to separate and degrades the mitotic cyclin. So remember we talked about in the last slide, there's that one particular cyclin, I'll just pop back there, CDK1, okay, which is a kinase that's bound to a particular cyclin that makes mitosis happen. So this APC, this other chemical, starts to break down those mitotic cyclins because we're getting to the end of mitosis and that's what starts to slow down mitosis. All right, so a little bit closer look at the role of these cyclins and CDKs. Um, remember that a kinase which is a type of protein bonded to a cyclin makes a CDK. Okay, we talked about that on an earlier slide. It's called a cyclin-dependent cyclin kinase. And the cyclin can be in different forms. If one, two, three, four are different types of cyclin. And depending on what type of cyclin the kinase binds to, will tell the cell what stage to move on to. Again, we discussed this already. <clears throat> At the G1 and G2 stages, there are different cyclins, and therefore different CDKs, that move the cell through those stages. There is a specific type of um, molecule called MPF, it's mitotic promoting factor, so this has to do with mitosis, that is a particular type of CDK that's bound to a cyclin. All right, so now we're gonna add more cyclin to a CDK. Now, you should have gotten a piece of paper that has a diagram on it that you taped into your notebook um, that kind of shows the process of how this MPF regulates mitosis. So we're going to go over that next. Alright, so a uh, couple of things you might want to fill in on your diagram just so that it makes a little bit more sense for you. 
Um, your cell cycle is represented in the middle here. Uh, you can recognize hopefully gap 1, synthesis, gap 2, and then mitosis. So you may want to label those. Um, the pale purple portion of each of these steps okay, is the CDK. The dark purple portion is a cyclin. Right? And remember, when you put together a particular CDK and a particular cyclin, we get what's called this MPF, or mitotic promoting factor. That's what actually starts mitosis. These little chunks of bright purple over here are the cyclin that's breaking apart. And this arrow over here on the right represents cyclin building up or accumulating. So I'm going to add my own little explanation to this um, diagram because it can be a little bit confusing. And you might want to write these steps in the appropriate place as I go through them as well. So the first thing that happens is this mitotic promoting factor, which again is part cyclin and part CDK bound together, signals for mitosis to begin. So when there's enough cyclin to make this MPF start off with mitosis. Over time though, the cyclin, the bright purple part, starts to break apart or degrade. If we don't have cyclin attached to the CDK anymore, right here where it's degraded, so CDK is on its own, that means we don't have MPF anymore. So that's the end of mitosis. So essentially that's what turns mitosis on and off. If we have MPF, which is the cyclin and the CDK bonded together, mitosis takes place. If we don't have it, if the cyclin has degraded, we just have CDK left over, mitosis is done. The CDK portion of the MPF gets recycled. It never breaks apart. So as I said, there's pretty much consistent levels of the CDK through all of interphase. Um, what's different is the ability of that CDK to bind to a cyclin. So as we go through the last portion of interphase, the cyclin starts to rebuild, starts to accumulate again, which means it's more likely to bond to the CDK. And if we have those build up and bond to the CDK, it can trigger mitosis to happen again because we're going to have enough MPF again to start mitosis. So the entire cell cycle and how it actually works is regulated um, in part by this MPF. So in cases of people that have cancer, where their cell cycle is kind of out of control and the cells are making too many copies of themselves, what's happening is this interphase Okay, where the CDK is not bound to the MPF, or sorry, to the cyclin to make MPF, that interphase is very much shortened or not existent at all. Instead, we've got MPF kind of on overdrive, lots and lots of MPF that tells, oops, back up, that tells the cell to keep going through mitosis over and over again. And that's what we call a uh, cancer cell because it can't regulate its own reproduction, which eventually forms a tumor. If you're interested in this and want to get more information about it, um, I do have this video clip that I linked to um, from the um, HH HHMI does a bunch of um, cancer research, among other things, and they talk about the genetics of this. So there's a particular gene um, in your body that affects the production of the CDK2 and programmed cell death. So when cells are supposed to be done growing and done reproducing and are supposed to die, it's called apoptosis. So if you're interested, you can link to that and watch that video um, just, you know, out of personal interest, nothing that we're going to discuss in class.